This tiny house is only 280 square feet and we're gonna to be touring it today. We're on the island of Vaishan here in Washington State. I had to take a ferry to get here to the tiny house. This place is really cool. Let's go check it out. On the ferry. Pretty cool mountain back there in the background. Whenever you arrive on the property, you'll park your car at the beginning and then you have about a 300 foot pathway through the beautiful nature right here with your cabin right there at the end. They also provide a wagon right here for you to store your luggage as well, which is amazing. Let's go check out the cabin. And then you reach the Wolf Den tiny house. It is just beautiful sitting here. We are on four acres of private property here on the island of Vaishan in Washington. Uh, the property is shared by the host. Their house is on it as well. Typical Airbnb style, it's no big deal. The privacy here and the beauty here is just unmatched. And it's really cool that we are on uh, the island. And the Wolf Den tiny house is Walden inspired. All locally handcrafted materials was uh, used for the build of this, which is pretty cool. Uh, the exterior is this black cedar. I love the deck that they built onto it. There's lots of access points around here. Dining spot right here. And at only 280 square feet of living space, there's not a lot of room in here, but they managed to make it feel a lot more spacious than what it actually is and really, really functional. I think the hosts nailed the design of this cabin. They kept it simple, but it's very beautiful. To me, it is really eye-catching. And if you can nail all three of those items, I think you did a great job and I love it. Let's go inside and check it out. walk inside and the ceiling is really, really tall in here. This first space is the living room. For only being 280 square feet of living space, uh, this is really wide and tall. It feels a lot more spacious in here, which is nice. Take my shoes off. Uh, this front part right here is actually tiled. Normally you have like a welcome mat or something. They have it tiled right here, which is pretty cool. Living room space, really large and comfortable couch. I mean, it's pretty deep and it looks like it might be able to convert into a, another bed option if needed, but beautiful couch. It faces these two windows right here in front of me and you got some games right here in front of you, a couple books and yeah, this is just a nice peaceful living room. Uh, the heater is over here on this side and the ladder right here in front of me leads up to the loft space but this ladder doesn't take up much room at all and it's not in the way of the walkway right through here that leads to the back portion of uh, this main floor. As we walk back through I'd like to remind you that all of the material used for this is locally sourced and handcrafted which is really cool. This first spot is a small dining option. Two seats right here. Pretty large uh, table to do some work at or anything. They leave some goodies here for you. The cookies were absolutely phenomenal. I'm gluten-free. I know I say that all the time but these were not gluten-free and I couldn't stop eating them. They were that good. I digress. Let's continue. Now we enter into the kitchen space. Pretty small kitchen but this is a small footprint. Back here is uh, everything you need though. I love the wood countertop here. The sink on the left with some drawers on the bottom. A mini fridge on this right side as well. And the floating shelves above, you got all of your plates. I mean, these plates and cups look uh, locally made as well. With coffee supplies and even a microwave toaster. You got all that stuff here. Perfect for a couple day stay. I know a lot of people always ask, you know, where's the oven or where's the washer and dryer? Well, if you plan on staying here for, you know, weeks at a time, that stuff would be necessary. But for these tiny house Airbnbs, you're normally not gonna be staying that long to need, you know, a washer or dryer or to make a giant Thanksgiving meal or something. So I've never had any issues. Uh, it's always been really pleasant staying at these places. Anyway, uh, this section right here closed off is the bathroom. There's also this door right here off the kitchen that leads out to the deck as well. There is a grill out there, so uh, mentioning no oven, you do have a grill out there for the warmer months. Pocket wooden door to separate this bathroom space and in here they did not uh, crunch any of the square footage or anything that kept this really spacious. Right here in the middle is your vanity. Tiled walk-in shower behind me. I like how they have all of this spaced out and then the toilet right here in front of me. Very comfortable. The tile on the bottom floor right here I love a lot. 
and this is all spacious and it's all under the loft space. Let's head up to the loft now and check that out. Climb up the ladder and into the loft and you have a full bed up here and it is impressively spacious up here. I'm able to stand right here in the middle against this railing and overlook the living room. Uh, there's just a lot of room up here. Normally loft beds are just slid on the floor with no bed frame. Uh, this one's big enough to have the bed up on a bed frame and there's nightstands on each side. There's two windows up here as well and they can both open. I really like the skylight. You get good views of the night sky whenever you're sleeping here. And one cool thing to note, I've never seen these before, are these battery powered lights on the sides of the bed. Uh, they look like sconces but you can take them off and it's kind of like a candle. You can walk around at night if you need it to with them. Pretty cool. Spacious loft. I've said that a lot in this video, but that's what I want to emphasize. 280 square feet of living space, and you can just see how much room there is in this tiny house, which is very, very impressive. Now I hear there's really good things to do on the island after you're here uh, done chilling out at the cabin tiny house. We can go and explore lighthouses, beaches, and some really good coffee. Let's go see what it's all about. Oh, I also heard that there's a strawberry festival here every summer and uh, they elect a new unofficial mayor of the island every single year. So if you're planning on coming here, uh, see when those dates are. Anyway, let's go check out the island. All right, I'm at the Bayshon Island Coffee Rotisserie. Very cool place. Ice latte. I had my hot one this morning. It's been fantastic. I've already drank half of it. It's good. Coffee shop, small grocery, and a bunch of like local goods. They had a flower press, which is really cool. A flower press book. And then there's also a small bookstore in here in the back. You walk in here, great selection of books. And there's even a fire stove right here. This is like the coziest spot on the entire island. My back's being warmed. I'm surrounded by these books. Uh, you have to come here. This is my new favorite coffee shop. Very cool, very cool opportunity here. Made it to the lighthouse, but it's closed. It's back there. You can probably hear the beeping in the background. They're doing something. How sad, what are the odds? The one time I'm on this island. Probably won't be closed if you come here. We're right on the water too. You can see Mount Mainier from here. This was a really fun episode. Uh, if you want to come stay here yourself, the link is down in the description below. Highly suggest it. Really fun and unique spot here in Washington. I had to take a ferry to get here to the tiny house. Uh, we're on an island and there's lots of cool things to do in the area. So pretty unique. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week in another Airbnb tour.